Hello. Um, in the last segment, we introduced the concept of AEP, absentee equal partition. Uh, basically, what AEP said is for any sequence drawn from a discrete memory source, the sequence will be typical. What do we mean by typical is basically the probability of the sequence will lie inside this range 2 to minus nhx minus epsilon to 2 to minus nhx plus epsilon. And also the number of typical sequences, or basically the size of the typical set, will be approximately 2 to the nhx. So we call that the, the uh, problem of compression is really closely related to the to the information content of the source because we can really interpret the amount of information for a source will be the minimum number of bits needed to represent the source. Or in other words, it will be the theoretical limit uh, that we can compress the source x here. So let's think of how we can compress a source x here, the discrete memory less source, with a uh, the AEP concept. So to compress the sequence, we will build a simple encoder and decoder here. Basically, encoder is just trying to map the input sequence into some indices, and the indices will be used later on, or like at different location, to reconstruct the original sequence. So how can we build this encoder and decoder? It turns out it can be very simple, given this AEP concept. What we can do is basically just construct a table at the encoder. The table will just include all the typical sequences. Let's, let me just write uh, the sequences with index as like x1, x2, and so on. This will include all the typical sequences, and I build a table of that. And how many typical sequences are there? There will be 2 to the n hx of that. So this index should go up to 2 to the n hx. So to encode, basically, given an input x, a sequence x here, we'll just look into this table and find the sequence that is equivalent to the input, and then just output the index. Let's say if the sequence is turned out as x3, then we will just output the index, and m will be equal to 3, and then send to the decoder. This will work as long as we have n is sufficiently large, and then we can ensure that, like, uh, all sequence drawn from this source will be typical, therefore will be included in this table. And at the decoder, of course, this will be very simple. It will have the same table at the decoder. You can simply reconstruct the uh, sequence uh, by table lookup. So then how much we can compress using this simple scheme here? We can compress the source x into 2 to the nhx log 2 to the nhx base way because we have 2 to the nhx sequences or the size the index the number of indices will be 2 to the nhx as well and therefore we only need log 2 to the nhx base to represent all these indices therefore it will be like equal to nhx base And um, we call that the length of the sequence is n, so therefore the number uh, of uh, the, the number of bits needed per sample will be simply um, n h x over n, or you go to h x bits per sample. Actually, as you can see, this is really a very efficient scheme because 
are, as we discussed in earlier segment, the, the amount of information in X is really equal to HX. That means that the minimum number of bits needed to represent X is already HX. And using this simple scheme, we can actually compress the source up to the theoretical limit HX precisely. But however, this scheme is not practical at all. Um, because if you think of the, think of this carefully, uh, we, this, the whole idea works only when n goes to infinity. That's when, um, we, that's at the time that we can ensure any sequence that drawn from the source will be typical. Therefore, will be included in the table. So if n is pretty small, then there will be like many exception cases occur that like some sequence drawn from the source won't be typical and therefore not included in the uh, tables and therefore uh, the encoder will fail. And of course, when n is very big, even if it's not infinity, when n is very big, the size of the table is huge because it's like exponential of n. And, um, so therefore, like, to find the, which sequence among the table is actually the input sequence will be a very uh, difficult task. Therefore, this game is really not practical in practice. Uh, we'll look into some more practical scheme later on, but at least this is a very, uh, interesting scheme and it also provides another evidence that the amount of information for a discrete memoryless source uh, should be at least less than equal to hx because given this scheme we know that like, if we take n goes to infinity we can find a scheme such that the, we only need hx bits per sample to represent the source therefore the number of bits minimum number of the bits needed to represent a sample will be less than this hx here and of course we know that it's actually exactly equal to hx